Welcome to the North Shore Community Association's podcast, May 4th, 2023. Hello, this is Annie Lafrenière, the NSCA's Programs and Communications Coordinator. Hi, this is Evelyn Audie, Executive Assistant from Bacomo's NSCA office. With Mental Health Awareness Week being recognized from May 1st to the 7th, we thought it would be appropriate to present Cynthia Shuglo from the Public Health Department of the CIS de la Côte Nord. She's talking with us about positive mental health and the work she and her team are doing in the communities on the North Shore. Then, we will cover community events and services on the North Shore of Quebec. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today, especially since it is, you know, the annual Mental Health Week. As you mentioned, my name is Cynthia Shuglo. I am a human relations officer for the Public Health Department of the CIS Cote Nord. I do work from Sitzil. Uh, I have a bachelor's in social work and have worked as a social worker in individual follow-ups in different sectors of the CIS for the past 10 or 11 years. And uh, where I am right now in public health, health, I've been here for about a little over a year. And um, a big part of my job, I would say 80%, is really to uh, promote positive mental health with kids between the ages of 5 and 25 but we don't work directly with them. We'll work with their environment. So here we're talking about the parents with the school staff, teachers, support staff, coaches, um, a little bit everyone that's around them. And I have a 20%, which is all adult population. So it covers pretty much all age groups. And it's everything that has to do with um, positive mental health. In your opinion, how do you think positive mental health is viewed as a whole by the general public? Well, I think in general, mental health is still a very taboo subject. People tend to avoid talking about it, which can lead to there being a lot more stigmatization that's done towards people who show or that have different behaviors that we can link with a mental health problem. But it's very important to differentiate between positive mental health and having a diagnosed mental health problem. The definition we use for mental health is the one given by the uh, World Health Organization, and they state that a mental health is a state of well-being that enables people to realize their full potential and to be able to cope with their everyday stressors. It also allows people to make positive contributions to their community. So in other words, it's really a balance between the different spheres of life, whether it's Uh, physical, social, emotional, spiritual, economical, and mental. So according to this definition, 100% of people have mental health. And it's just as important to take care of it as our physical health. Because not too long ago, we'd look at mental health as having either presence or absence of mental health problems. But not too long ago, we added another axis, which allows us to evaluate whether a person's mental health levels are optimal or minimal. I usually take an example of uh, Georges et Georgette, but for the English-speaking community, I will go with Robert and Rebecca. So um, Robert is an adult man. He has no mental health problem diagnosed, but he has just lost his job, he has like financial difficulties. His mom is hospitalized for health problems. He doesn't get along too great with his siblings. We can add more stressors for him. Whereas Rebecca, um, she's an adult woman, but she does have a diagnosis of chronic depression. However, she has follow-ups with her doctor. The course of treatment has been decided. She's starting medication. Um, She's seeing a social worker to talk about everything she's living and how she's living it. And she collaborates really well with this treatment plan, so much so that her situation improves and stabilizes. So according to the mental health continuum, who would have the optimal mental health levels? between Robert and Rebecca. Sounds like Rebecca would, because she's seeking active help. 
Exactly. So even though she does have a diagnosis of chronic depression, she has the resources to help her out through this tough patch. So she would have the optimal mental health levels here in this situation. So even people with mental health problems can work and function even better than people who don't, depending on, on what they're living at that moment. I think that the better we know that ourselves and the better we listen to our bodies, the more we're able to take this step forward. And we have to be willing to change our situation to go seek that help. So as soon as we see that how we're feeling has an impact on, on our functioning, our everyday functioning, that's when we do have to go and seek help. It doesn't have to be a professional. You know, it could be a member of the family. It could be a close friend. It could be a colleague. It could be pretty much anyone who you trust. Right. Sometimes just being able to talk about it, verbalize about it, it, it helps a great deal without even having a solution present. Exactly. How are organizations such as yours addressing the ever-increasing mental health issues that we're seeing now? Well, I can't really answer for all organizations, obviously, but if you're asking me from a public health department perspective, yes. I'd say that there's really a lot more done with prevention promotion activities. Um, there's a lot of investment being put into this, and we're trying to bring awareness to kids at a younger age. Well, we do have in a public health department a um, specialized educator. Um, and her job is really to go into classrooms with the kids to talk about different subjects. And we talk with the environment. We try to um, sensibilize. Oh, sensitize them. Sensitize, yes. Like the parents and the teachers to, to what should be done, to how we should, um, you know, receive what the kids are telling us, whether it's with words or with behaviors. True. And, and at the same time, you know, with our special educator, well, it's just letting kids know that, you know, we're trying to normalize what mental health is so that they don't grow up with that taboo that so many people have and that we're trying to demystify right now. Right, because there is a lot of stigma still attached to yes. a mental illness and that uh, deters a lot of the people from seeking help because they don't want to be labeled. Exactly. Um, and the more we invest in mental health, the more it's going to have positive effects because it can reduce the number of patients showing up to the ER or being referred to other services. It can reduce as well the severity of health-related conditions when, when people are consulting their doctors. It also reduces waiting lists and the costs for these services. And all of this leads to an increase in the quality of life of Quebecers in general. And right now, like I am in Sitzil, but I'm surrounded by five amazing colleagues that have the same job as I do, but throughout the Cotonou region. And we all have this um, mandate or responsibility to build partnerships with different community organizations, as well as with the different school directions. So this makes um, our workshops be more available for practically all age groups. And we wouldn't be able to do that if these people, if these entities didn't realize or didn't see that mental health right now is an issue in the population. So what services or programs does the CIS offer to help support to the positive mental health? And are these services available in English as well? Well, I'm working very hard on that, actually, <laughs> um, especially in our team in public health. Um and once again, I can only talk with this perspective in mind since this is where I'm, I work from. Yes, of but, course. But, you know, we try to adapt our workshops to different community organizations and groups as well as their needs. So it's something, you know, if, if it's a subject that could have an influence on our mental health, we're in. We try to, and we'll go get like the best practices, mm -hmm. if, I, if I can say it like that. But... I am the only completely bilingual human relations officer on our team. So I am responsible for offering services on the lower North Shore and have worked in collaboration before with the Coasters Association as well as the NSCA in the past to make workshops available for the English speaking community throughout the region. And um, you know, we've offered in person as well as virtual workshops on different subjects. So we're hoping that that helps a little bit. And I do have a few colleagues that can help out once in a while with the different activities, depending on the level of comfort with the English language, of course. 
And for the services that are offered at the CIS in English, well, we do offer an in-person translation services for those needing it. But most people don't know that that exists. <laughs> we just mm. have to ask for it and, and we'll call somebody to be able to translate. Um, all English employees from the CIS have been asked to wear a yellow badge with their employee cards. We're more easily recognizable. So if you go to the CIS and you see somebody walking by an employee that has a yellow badge behind their ID card, well, don't hesitate. You can ask them. <laughs> Yeah. I wanted to go back to a point that you had made where he had said um, you identified needs of the people. How do you identify those needs? Is there surveys done or? Well, what we try to do is really uh, meet up with the community organization, with the school principals and talk with them with what their needs are specifically. So we check with them what the needs are and, and what we can do to answer the demand. Well, it's been a very informative um, interview, and I really want to thank you for the opportunity and your insightful comments. So at this time, I'd like to say thank you, and I wish that you have a good rest of the day. Well, thank you so much. National Immunization Week was recognized from April 24th to the 30th. The Public Health Agency of Canada published updated immunization guides for parents, adults, and teenagers in March 2023. These plain language resources explain the importance of vaccination for different age groups and include information on vaccine safety and what to expect at your vaccination appointments. Check out their website for more information. Calling all book readers, the NSCA will be holding its first ever book exchange at the NSCA Setzel office on May 5th. Come by with your books you have already read and no longer wish to have and exchange it for another one. Please contact Alicia to obtain one ticket for each book you bring and that ticket will be used to get a different book. There will be light refreshments served. On Saturday, May 6th at 10 a.m., join Amber for toddler time in Sitil. We'll celebrate Mother's Day with tea and crafts. If dad wants to come, please bring him. Everyone is welcome. Contact Amber at the Sitil NSE office to reserve your place. If you're in the area of Bacomo on Friday, May 12th at 5.30, drop by the Bacomo High School to support their annual bean supper. Always a hit with great food and entertainment. For more details, contact the Community Development Agent at BCHS, Richard Godet. This month, for story time, Amber prepared a surprise for both communities of Port Cartier and Setil. Alicia, guest speaker of the NSCA, will be present to talk about building better bonds between parents and children. Join them for stories and crafts in Port Cartier on Saturday, May 13th in Le Manuscrit Public Library and in Sittil on Saturday, May 20th in Louis-Ange Santerre Public Library. Both events are at 10 a.m. and you should register for story time in your local library. Join us on Wednesday, May 17th at 10 a.m. for a sharp session formerly known as CHEP Sessions, on the topic of aging in place while light-sizing with presenter Marie-Claude Giguère, founder of Helping Seniors. This event is being held by Zoom, so please register to receive the link. Looking to get away from it all and smell the great North Shore air? Put your walking shoes on and explore the many beautiful beaches in and around the North Shore. Pack a picnic and enjoy what it has to offer. Check out Tourism Côte Nord's website for details on how to access the many beaches in your area. This is a reminder to students wishing to apply for the Health and Social Services Community Network Bursary Program through McGill University. You must have your applications into the NSCA by May 24th, 5 p.m. Check out the NSCA Facebook page for more details or contact Jody Lassard at the Baycomo office. We 
would like to thank our sponsor for this podcast, the Secretariat aux Relations avec les Québécois d'expression anglaise. 